skateboarders. Welcome to TSM Live Show, Season 6, Episode 1. I'm your host, Tommy Zam. This episode, we have pyro writer Izzy, musical guest, New Breeze Project, and pro writer TJ Rogers. You guys ready to get this show started? Yeah. Let's do this. Bring on Izzy. How you doing today? Chilling, man. Chilling. It's a good day today, man. I know. It's a little bit cloudy out there. Looks like it's going to rain. I know. It's in and out. It's like, I don't know. The San Diego weather is different from LA, you know? Oh, you're from LA? Yeah, from Los Angeles. What part? Uh, East LA. Okay. Uh, Boyle Heights area. I grew up there and then like I moved to Alhambra. Like, I usually... Uh, stay in the Alhambra area okay. like, all my life. So, and yeah. th that's where you grew up skateboarding at? That's where you started everything? Yeah. Well, actually, in East L.A., I met my homie Lalo. He's uh, He moved to Pomona, and, like, I don't know, man. It's just something about skateboarding that just, like, kept me there the whole time. I just, yeah, wherever he went, oh, man. I'm fucking stressed now, I don't know. He was just fucking getting my shit together. <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, fucking... My friend Lalo, uh, I met him over there in uh, East LA. We just started playing basketball and shit, and mm -hmm. like, uh, he just s had a skateboard all the time, and I just got interested. Then me and my cousins would like jump on the on the board, grab some shit from Walmart, you know, like those shitty boards. Like, like little creature, like creature, like yeah. little ant board. No, not them. even like maybe like a World Industries okay. board, like from. What Big did they sell those at Walmart? Something. No, no, like a Big Five. Oh, okay. Because I I don't know, I just felt cool, you know. He was yeah. like. Oh man, get get some good shit, you know, like get get it like a World Industries board, but yeah, it was still some shitty. <laughs> so shitty you had a little flame, flame boy on there, huh? Yeah, dude, I loved Flame Boy and like like uh, Water Boy. I was always like, man, some bitch shit, but like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude. Um, yeah, and then uh, he he moved out to like Pomona, and I was just I was just like, I'm just gonna keep skating. So I would drive out. Well, my mom would drive me out there and shit, and we drop and he drop me off, and we just go on skate missions like. For the whole weekend, just bust my shit and be sweaty and nasty, and yeah, just keep skating like really st street, strictly streets, just all day. So you mostly skated street. That's where you grew up on, or was it more parks? Yeah, no, always street because you know I didn't really always have access to parks. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get a ride, or like you know, it just didn't. Parents just busy and shit, so we would just take public transit or like. Whatever we would see, we'd just skate and like, curb over a like hydrant, you know, some stairs. It's usually stairs that we would skate, so I always have like heel bruises and shit. Like, <laughs> horrible. Yeah. It's the worst, right? Yeah, dude, it's horrible. And then, do you have like, did you have your like 
local skate shop supported you or what? Yeah, dude, it's crazy because uh, it was actually this skate shop called IDS. Mm -hmm. I forgot what it stood for back in the day, but now they re like they like revamped it. I don't know. It's like a like some another owner took over the name and opened it back up, and it's just so it's like reminiscent of like back in the day like ideas yeah it's it i don't know if anybody east l.a know that uh skate shop from back in the day ideas that's just yeah it's it's a dope skate shop that always had like sales on shoes and shit yeah it was cool man and, and so they did a lot for the skate community right they yeah a lot, a lot of autograph signings stuff like that yeah um they would always operate at uh belvedere okay another shout out to belvedere uh fucking uh excuse my language yeah, they would they would always do it like a trick contest and stuff okay. like that. Sometimes they would have like a ramp in front of their um their shop. It was right across the street from uh King Taco. Okay. I don't know if you guys know that. Channel. No, I've never been there. No. Okay. The good tacos. Yeah, good tacos. What's yeah. your favorite taco? <sighs> Asada. I know it's fucking lame and plain, but <laughs> Asada is just like my favorite. I, I don't know. What do you get like like shredded cheese on it or what? No, no, no. Just straight Asada. Uh, I don't know. It's a it's different in LA. It's just kind of just you just enjoy the meat, and then over here it's like you kind of like mix it up, you know, with some flavor. But yeah, it's just always a salad taco. It's just straight asada and just maybe some cilantro and onion, you know, some salsa. Bomb. So, so you prefer, what do you prefer more, San Diego tacos or LA tacos? Because oh, everybody says everybody says like LA has better burritos and tacos than San Diego. San Diego has better burritos and tacos. What you, you're coming from both oh, ends. So which one do you think? I think I think if you if you want to go with like just like tacos and burritos, I would say L.A. But oh, it, man. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh, oh, but like um, they have some really good uh, like like the Cali burritos here is just so good. Uh, well, yeah, I always get surf and turf burritos oh, the surf here. And turf They're is good. so good with here. that shrimp like, in it. Yeah, yeah, they they mix it up. They throw some like um, some like. Uh, what is it called? Like some pico, some pico, and also the like some some good cheddar cheese oh, or, yeah. or um, no, I don't, I don't know the white cheese. Do they do like pepper jack. Pepper oh jack. Oh my yeah. god, so good. <laughs> <laughs> Make me hungry right I know, now. Dude. man. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> anybody got? Anybody want to go run for some burritos or something? <laughs> <laughs> and so like, so you had a skate shop that supported you, and that's and that's where you started skateboarding more and more, right? Yeah, it was it was honestly more of the homies supporting me because, uh, like, they they always, it's like, I, I didn't have a shoe, some shoes, they'd be like, yo, you need some shoes, I got some bust, like, some busted old shoes, but, you know, they'll get you through another month of skateboarding or, yeah. like, you need a board, or, like, here's a deck, like, yeah, I, like, I just used it, but I'm already getting a new one, you know, like, so... It was honestly mostly like community that that kind of kept me skateboarding, yeah. Uh, skate shops do, do help. I mean, they got the product and stuff, but <laughs> but yeah, for sure the community helped for sure. And and, and what kind of what kind of music do you listen to? What's your music like? What's your to go start? So something you wake up in the morning, you listen to some music that pumps you up. Like what what is it? Oh man, I gotta. Larry June. Larry June? Hell <laughs> oh, yeah. I fuck with Larry June. You know he's coming um, February 12th. Oh, no way. Or 11th. Oh, hey. Hey, we gotta, we gotta get those tickets for to sure. Only 24 damn. bucks. Damn. Oh, damn. I gotta get some tickets for sure. <laughs> damn. Hi. Anybody down with Larry June? Nobody? <laughs> nobody fuck with Larry June? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Larry June, man. That's my boy. So, so Larry June pumps you up. Yeah. And, oh, uh, Sade. Sade? Uh, I like Sade a lot. Oh, and Michael Jackson, my boy. Michael Jackson, Michael really? Jackson's my boy. Yeah. What, what are you listening to? Thriller? Or what? Uh, my favorite <laughs> album is Off the Wall. Off the Wall. Yeah. That's a good one. It gets me like just going, just dancing, you know, like. So, so, so right before you jump to the trick, you pop in Michael Jackson. Yeah, like it's just like... yeah, just flowing. Honestly, with with when I'm skateboarding, it's more like a uh, Larry June. It's kind of like business mindset, you know. Like, you gotta get. These you you gotta listen to the or organic song. Yeah, exactly. Something <laughs> organic, you know, some orange juice or some shit. Yeah. That's right, dude. Yeah. And you gave us a video part. Tell us about this little video. Oh, uh, dude. Um, well, you know, it's hard out here when uh, you just moved out and you just don't really know a lot of people. But, you know, some people, you, the the few people that I met, they really did help. They're like, you know, let's film. Let's go to these spots. I know these spots and stuff. So it was cool to meet those people and, like, really supportive people. And, like, 
Um, but besides that, I had to go out on myself and just, I even bought me a little, um, like a gimbal, like not, not a gimbal, but it's like a oh, tripod, okay. you know, and like it sticks to like poles like, and like stuff an e like that. Like a 360 thing? Yeah, yeah, and I just like set it up and I was just like, alright, I'm just gonna go get this clip by myself. And yeah, and I think I, I like I like the the part just because I was in my area that I live in right now, which is City Heights. Okay. Shout out City Heights, San Diego. So you skate it, the park it all the time. Like home. Yeah, City Heights, uh, Park de la Cruz, Park yeah, de la Cruz, the park's is fun, my shit, dude. hell yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, no one skates that small park. Everyone needs to skate that small park more, like the the one across the bridge. That yeah. was the shit. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, that part. Uh, I liked it a lot because I just went out on my own and like found spots and I was like, these spots, I'm going to do this trick and I did them. So it was cool. Yeah, man. All it was right. dope. You ready to show the whole world it? Let's see it, dude. All right, guys. Here it comes. Izzy's edit. Check it out. Dude, that was a dope dude. ass burial hill, hill right? Burial yes, hill? Yes, sir. Dude, tell us about that day, dude. Uh, it was actually really cool. Like, um, I just got up that day and I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta put some shit out today. So I just got out on my car and I was like, I'm gonna hit UCSD. Uh, I live like maybe three or four blocks from there, so I just drove up. The, the one downtown, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So I, I went up that. Uh, wait, is it UCSD or SDSU? I think that you know, I think that is down. It, it's the one right off university, between university, or yeah. off university, yeah. I think that's the one. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, I pull up, and then I'm like, um, I'm just going to go to this, I'm just going to go right around, right around, I saw the double set, and I was just flinging some kickflips and just doing some random shit, and I was like, I'm, I'm going to try Barry Hill. And I was trying it, I set up the, the tripod, and then uh, it's cool because uh, this giant group of kids, they're like middle schoolers, they just pull up and they're like, oh my God, like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, now I got a fucking crowd, you know, like I got to do this shit in front of a crowd. And, um, um, and they're just hyping me up and they're like, we'll record you. And, and I was like, all right, all right. And they're like, this one right here, this one right here. And then I just, uh, yeah, and I, I, I did it, I landed it and it was, it was dope. And, uh, to yeah. make your day that were you like Fuck. it was it was cool man because all the kids were hyped and they're like this this one uh younger girl she was like oh i'm gonna get all the all the school to follow you and she she got like 34 kids to follow me it's oh, pretty shit. crazy <laughs> yeah it's pretty crazy yeah yeah so it was, so, it was so you cool, felt like man. a superstar that day i i did man i did like uh i felt a lot of pressure but it was cool to like like do it for the kids, I guess. Dude, that's know? rad, dude. Hell yeah. yeah, that's sick. Thank you, man. And then, um, so you have sponsors yourself. Well, who do you write for? Yeah, man, I just got a sponsor, man. Oh, dude, gotta show you these, man. Oh, those are dope ass boys. Pyro, man. Hell yeah, tell dude, us a little the about hom them. The homie Jamie, real cool guy, man. Just looking out for everybody. Um, just yeah, making it happen, man. Just trying to put boards in hands for the people that you know deserve it and like. Yeah, this one's the the cotton candy. This is one of my favorite. Graphics, That's a dope. I like the color, dude. Yeah, I like. I just like the the print and everything. But yeah, man, uh, Pyro Land, Jamie. Shout out to Jamie. Man. He's such a good guy. Like just trying to trying to get the skateboarders going. You know, like it's not always about like being cool. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's really cool, man. Like 
Um, and where can people get the boards at? Uh, I'm I, right now. I'm not uh, officially sure. Uh, Do we have the website, yeah. Instagram, or what? Yeah, we got it. We got an Instagram, Pyro Skateboards. Uh, look that up. IG. Get okay. there while you can, and you can just always DM them, and uh, we'll get a board to you. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, getting boards to to people that need them, man. So, and I uh, deserve them for sure. Real cool, real cool peeps. And, and do you have other sponsors or anything, or is that it? Uh, no, that's that's uh, that's all for now. But okay. I'm working on it. You know, yeah, like, that's the dream. I'm just uh, I'm just doing this this whole thing like uh, just as a hobby, and I'm just do, doing what I can with it. You know, so yeah, yeah I'm enjoying it. Hell yeah, dude. And then like you know, a couple questions before we take off. Um, what do you have coming up for 2023? Any video parts or anything you got working on? Or yeah, what? man, we're, um, definitely working on a video part uh, for Pyro for sure. Gonna tr like this year. I'm I have a lot of goals with with skateboarding for sure. Got to put out some footage for sure. And uh, you know, in personal life, that's that's another thing because you know, you know, people people got lives, you know. So uh, big changes coming on uh, and. Uh, with those, we'll see with skateboarding and shit, but definitely going to put out some footage. Hell yeah. Uh, trying to go big or go home this year. I like sure. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I like that. And then um, what can you say to the upcoming skaters? Like, what, any good advice, anything you want to say to them? Like, oh, yeah. Plenty. Anything at all. <laughs> uh, don't worry about the hype, man. Just, uh, just skate and have fun. Um, but also, it's always good to push your limits, you know? Uh but be smart, practice, and put in the work. That's the ultimate thing. Just put in the work and stay consistent. That's uh, that's what I gotta say, man. Hell yeah, one hundred, yeah. brother. Hell yeah. Thank thanks for having me. Oh, definitely, brother. definitely. Izzy, thanks you, for coming on the show, man. Yes, sir. Stick around because coming up next is New Breeze Projects. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, hey. good, man. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Hey, Tommy. What's up? Good, good. And so, what's You know, I want to introduce you guys, but tell us who who's who. Well, um, we're New Breeze Project. My name is Breeze. My artist name is New Breeze, and that's my name is Rodolfo, and my artist name is Awajije. Okay, cool. Hell yeah, dude. And so, you guys are in France right now, right? Um, actually, we're in Germany. Um, oh, Germany. Most of the border yeah. to France. Um, yeah, we we we're based in Germany. Okay, cool. And what part of Germany? Um, it's called the Saarland. It's it's super small, um, and it's right at the border, so all the way in the west, um, southwest Germany. Okay, and so so you guys are pretty close to like what like a stone away from France. That's it. That's it. Basically, um, like you know, the, the the closest bigger city is just right at the border to France. So it's like a thirty minute drive away from France. Um, they're super close to Luxembourg. Um, yeah. That's right, dude. And so you guys, 
Um, so how'd you guys meet up? Like, you know, we could do one on one. Like, how did you guys meet up? Uh, well, there's actually one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was actually um, there's there's a very small music festival in our town. We live in a very small town. It's called San Vendo. Um, and actually, we we went there, and like a friend of mine said, "Hey, I know this. Uh, I know this African dude, and he's super interesting. Uh, he's in our school. He came to Germany, and I was like, oh, cool. I'm super excited to meet him. Um, and then we met at this festival, and then um, yeah, yeah, us and another. Were- everything stopped yeah that's that's where everything starts and we we just met and we talked and it was like everything i said he replied oh me too and then everything he was saying i was like oh me too like you're making music hey me too uh you like hip-hop well me too um and then yeah we, you know we developed a pretty pretty close uh friendship brotherhood i guess yeah um so you guys yeah. are you guys are like brothers from different mothers that's <laughs> it. That's it. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, yeah, and then like um, I, I had this band project um, that I started because I was writing a lot of music um, at home, and then uh, yeah, that's how we got together. Then we were recording some stuff uh, and figured out because first the, the brotherhood was there, and then like one day he came over to the to the small studio that we got here, um, and he was uh, all of a sudden he was singing. I was like, wow, this is so amazing. We 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 got to start something together. Um, and then we took a lot of my compositions and then added some, uh, you know, uh, parts in Goombe. Yeah, in Goombe. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's that's how it started. Then, um, yeah, my dad is a musician too. So oh, what? Was um, yeah, and then the, we got a free jazz trombone player by the name of Christoph Tavis. Um, was like a local legend. Uh, yeah, and that's yeah, that's how we started. We did. Then play with some other musicians and try, you know, different things. But like the quartet that we're in right now is really our, our zone. So, yeah. dude, that's so rad, dude. And and was is, is hip like how did you get into music? You know, coming from Africa, was hip hop really huge out in Africa? Um, in, in the city in in Cotton, where I was living two years before I came here, and um, yeah, there was hip hop, really basic American and. Uh, uh, African together, and uh, yeah, and then uh, when I was I, I was uh, ground in, in in our village uh, in Benin, and there is a totally different music. It was so different because everything was traditional. It was so it's in the and then I was so interesting to to hear from city to the village and to compare everything together and to think on in, with my own mind and, and and that was so crazy and then i came here it was also another world for me uh when i came here in germany and uh yeah and i met my brother who know more than uh, um, than I, I was thinking about uh, i mean like uh every i mean he he he, he know many many musicians from from usa for example that i didn't know i just hear the music that I like, and he showed me that, and I said, "Oh, damn, is he?" And then it's uh, we, we was talking about that, and it's 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 formed something something bigger, something something special uh, between us, and uh, I really like it, and that's how I come together to this. Uh, we come together to this. And 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 the question too is, uh, so did you did your family? Like you you how'd you get into music? Was it your family? Or you heard some like? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but um, in 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 our our village, uh, there's yeah everywhere music. I was I was born in music, <laughs> so let's say like this. Um, and my father, my father uh, was a musician. He had own group, but he wasn't like yeah de- developing so really nice because he he died really earlier. Um, yeah, he lived out very very earlier. And so I, I didn't know very, uh, I didn't know uh, much things from him. I just know it from talking from my mom and uh, yeah, but that, that, that was the test. So we, we are, we're continuing the future now, they say. Well, well, you, well, you got your dad's talent in, inside you, right? Most F. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your, your brother says most F. <laughs> 
<laughs> and yeah. and you, um, so how'd you? You said your dad was a musician. What what kind of music did he play? Me or him? Yeah, you. And what kind of music? Yeah, yeah. So we we play. There's there's such in. Let let me tell you. In every every village, there's another sound, another traditional music. Mm -hmm. We have we have toba, we have uh, chembe, we have uh, uh, agbaja. We have a lot a lot of different things that, and also different instrument that we make it ourselves. Uh, we we think we we can play and bring the joy to the people. <laughs> yeah, that's right, dude. I, I remember I, I went to South Africa. I know it's a little bit different, um, yeah. but I went to South Africa many, many years ago, and, and and it was just the culture out there was just amazing. You know, just you know, and I picked up a lot of like South African hip hop and stuff like that, and I was just, just blown away with it. And stuff. So and so in Germany, where where you're from, um, so music is hip hop is pretty big in Germany. Um, yeah, uh, I guess everywhere now. Um, but uh, yeah, some of the best-selling artists in Germany are hip-hop artists. Um, yeah, um, so there's a huge called Deutsch Rap Szene, which is like a scene of German rappers. Super, super big now. That's right. And and so you said your dad was into music, was a musician, right? Yes, um, he still is. Well. Uh, actually, he's a jazz musician. Um, so oh, I actually was brought up in a household full of jazz records. Um, it's like, uh, yeah. Um, and he, he's playing, now he's playing a nine string bass. Um, they build himself. Um, so that's also special for our group. Um, yeah. Uh, and so when I was little, like, uh, I, I got my first drum set when I was three years old. Um, <laughs> and, and then I started playing because my mom was a musician too. Um, but not a professional musician, but you know, she likes playing bass too. Um, so yeah, I was brought up to low frequencies and, and group. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, dude. So, so you, so you had it both as your mom, your dad, and you know, he had his, yeah. his village and everything. So you guys like, like just, just naturally musicians, you know, y'all just like, we're three, four, like, you know what? I'm going to be a musician. I'm going to jam out and I'm going to do this right. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yes, and like the, the, I think the, one of the most interesting things about our group is that our musical influences are so different. Um, you know, him coming from his village uh, and me coming from uh, from the background of like a lot of jazz music, but a lot of new hip hop stuff that I gravitate towards. Um, and then the other two in the band who are like one generation uh, older than, than us. Um, so they have a lot of this old school blues and funk and, and, and soul music. Uh, also. Um, and like our, our trombone player uh, is in the free jazz scene. Uh, so he brings a lot of crazy energy and musical styles that I, you know, uh, I haven't been introduced to. Um, you know, I knew Arnett Coleman and stuff like that, but then he digs way deeper. Wow, that's rad. And so how'd y'all like form New Breeze Project? Like how'd y'all come up with that? Um, well, uh, actually, uh, it just happened over, over the course of time. Uh, we played some music, then uh, we, we got our first gig, uh, um, and then we needed a name, and I was like, uh, what am I going to do? Uh, <laughs> you know, I was, uh, always starts like that. And then I felt like um, we, we had this idea of, like, developing a new form of music every time we play uh, at the time, uh, um, and that's why we I was thinking, yeah, my name, my actual name is Breeze. So mm -hmm. uh, my birth name, so Breeze makes a lot of sense since I rap in English. Um, and then we figured, yeah, let's, let's just call it New Breeze because Breeze is like, uh, uh, just make it a genre or whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's how we started. That's how that's we started. Awesome. And that's a cool name. I like the name. It's, it's very like out there, you know, New Breeze Project. You know, it's like, well, who, who is this? You know, because yeah. Because I watched a lot of y'all stuff. Because like, like I, you know, like um, how I got introduced to you guys is with Kosher Deals. And when Kosher Deals went out yeah. to France, he posted a, a thing on Instagram of you guys and him freestyling and everything on the street. And I was, I looked you guys up, and I was like, I'm gonna see what these guys are about. And then I listened to, it and I was like, dude, these guys fucking kill it, dude. I love it, dude. I want to get these guys on the show, man. Yeah. yeah. 
And, and do you guys remember your first show that y'all did together? Were y'all nervous when y'all did y'all's first show together? We were nervous as a, as a, as a thing because I mean, we we already start from ground and we always in in people who make music and we did it with them and so this feeling also growing up also with us together. So um yeah maybe now we, we, we can say we, we feel like professional when we're when, when we are on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, I mean, like the, the cool thing about um, nervousness is that, like, the first show I remember, the first show we played was in the school. Um, I'm not working in the school, also. Um, and uh, we had a break dancer, and we had another female singer. Because um, I was just calling everyone that I know. It's like, yeah, we got this gig, we, we get some money. Like, I call everyone I know and just say, hey, <laughs> you want to start something? Um, and then, like, uh, yeah, we had. Had a, an amazing second drama, um, and and like yeah, you know, good good professional musicians with us. So th that actually helps calming calming down, uh, you know, taking the nervousness out. Because you know, if you miss something, well, they keep playing, and then you know, we we were always able. Like early on, I was learning to improvise a lot, and we do that do a lot of on the spot freestyles, and like you know, um, and by now the band is like so together that yeah. We, we can do whatever we want, sending calls out. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good thing. I mean, it's glad that you guys got the niche out first, and then now you guys are like, you know what? We'll just roll right through this thing. You know, we got this. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Um, yeah, and the audience was like cheering and everything, so we were like, oh, that, that helps too. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, another qu a question too. So, so each one of you guys. Um, you know, this answers for both of you guys. So before you perform, do y'all do like a certain ritual, ritual like, you know, like, you know, like stretch or, 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 or sing your vocal, get your vocals ready or anything like that? Um, I mean, we make rehearsal before and we did all that. Uh, I mean, rehearsal will repeat all the songs that we, we, we produce. Like right before we go on stage. Before we go, yeah, yeah. Before, before we go on stage, we pray. We pray to, to what we, we believe and to, to God and yeah. And that's it. And that gives us also strange power to, to stay and, and bring the joy to the people. Dude, that's right, dude. And, yeah, and right. have you got have you guys ever messed up during the thing? Like forget a lyric or forget something and you all just play right through? Yeah, like the professional answer would be no. <laughs> but, uh, no it happens occasionally that um, if we get a lyric or, um, yeah, hit, hit the wrong sample, that happens. Uh, you're, like this, you're like this, bang. oh, wait, that sounds good. Let's keep it going. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's basically it. So I guess, you know, the power of jazz music or like music in general that contains improvisation is that you can, you can keep going with whatever happens. And then, like, since we both uh, like are pretty like decent freestylers, I guess, um, you know, if if you just miss a lyric, you just continue rapping, you know, rap different lyrics, and then come back. Um, so, yeah. And and, and yeah. for the audience, and for the audience, um, the viewers, um, New Breeze Project. Tell us what's about. I mean, what's what's the story behind New Breeze Project? What kind of music gender is it? Is it like hip hop, little jazz? Like, what's the what's the story behind it? Well, um, the story behind it is generally that um, we thought we called it hip hop fusion um, because we got a lot of hip hop, which is like kind of the dominant element since we are both rappers. Mm -hmm. um, but like, there there is like throughout our our show, there's so many musical influences that actually fuel our music and our compositions um, that you know. Um, didn't want to call it straight hip hop because it's not, you know, we play some samples in the show, uh, but that's like, uh, you know, not not the most part of our show. The most part of our show is that we, we play as a live band. Um, and we do still, like, even if we play like short songs and medleys and everything, um, we still always like, you know, do live improvisation. So all the solos we play is improvised. Um, we always have some songs um, where, where we just jam um, to, to bring that to the people. And I guess um, what's cool for the audience is that, um, especially when we play live, but I think also 
in our catalog. Uh, I mean, we're working on a lot of music right now that's going to come out this year. We're going to bring out our first album to uh, this year. And I guess what's cool is that um, since we are coming from different musical backgrounds, I guess for the audience, it's also great if they come from different musical backgrounds, that they have something in our music that they can dig or that, you know, they, 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 that resonates with them. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yes. That's right. Uh, yeah. And then lyric wise, also, um, that's why, you know, I felt most comfortable rapping in English. Um, and then we have uh, Gumbe as a language. So, you know, we also thought, you know, there's there's certain things that people from Benin can relate to more, people from all over the world can relate to more. Um, we have some stuff in French too that we're working on, uh, you know, since I'm also French, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering about that because I was wondering, because in my head I was thinking, like, does he, does he hip does his lyrics in Germany or France, you know, or can you do both? Yeah, um, so actually, like, uh, English is my, in my language that I prefer, like, rhyme wise, um, especially from the sound, like, I feel most comfortable. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're doing workshop projects too, where we teach the kids to write in German, or we're doing some French stuff. I have a group now where we like, uh, they wanted to do something in uh, Arabic. And that was super hard for me because I didn't understand anything. Yeah. Like, put translation and everything, you can still get something done. You can still show them the rhyme scheme and make things happen. So, That's so right. Awesome. And, and then you guys uh, got, gave me this video. Tell us this video we're about to watch. Yes, um, actually, this the, the news video we brought out um, was from a gig we played last summer, um, and we had the pleasure to have um, like uh, two amazing artists coming over from from Denmark. Um, they they have a band called Word Spray, um, and a super dope underground hip hop from Denmark. Uh, and then we just uh, you know booked them for the show, um, and we have uh, our brother is also a great DJ um, from from our region. Um, yeah, DJ FKI, um, so we featured him uh, on the video. So we actually did the show, it looked super good. And then, um, like I said, we always keep a part while we jamming. So the part you're gonna see right now is the part when we really like do all, uh, all improvised freestyle uh, jamming. Um, and then, yeah, our brother PMC, we got a young rapper that we're working with right now. He's only 16 years old. What? Um, he's coming from the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. um and yeah he's an amazing like young guy freestyle rapper uh, and he has this dominican swag in his spanish uh it's kind of cool um so yeah you'll see him at, at at the top of the video um so that's our band with special guests on the ones and twos dj fki then a guest rapper from denmark kuku agami legend in his own right uh awesome. Yeah, and then PMC also featured. You, you ready to show show the whole world this? Yeah, let's go. Of let's course, go. of course. All right, guys, we're gonna check out New Breeze Projects. We're gonna watch this thing. Let's check it out. Here it is. Touch your mind and your soul frame. Long walks through the park, having long talks. 
got a pass, present in a bit of sports. Do like LeBron, so we watch the game at the courts. Caught a tan hit and some laying at the floor. Action, kiss him with a passion like we just bought. Give you the bracelet, something that I just bought. Argue with me like the talk low on politics. I like a girl with brains on some knowledge. Shit. Got a degree with the college on the scholarship. Plus, you get real good here, know how to polish it. I like your mind, your booty, and your breast, girl. After we fuck, I like to chill and have a rest, girl. You like to shower, damn food, and if it's all wet. Make me wanna wake up, have some more sex. Think you're playing with me, I think you know that. Fighting on the couch in the song and the soul back. Ah. Do we have a jam going down in here? I got one more, yo. You got one more? Yo, so pretty, number one in the city. Oh, I like that. Let's do that again. So pretty, number one in the city. Love your two hand grenades. It's what I call your titties. Cause I'm a chicken head bitch and can't fuck with me. Going to bed, let's get one thing clear. You let the lies of the rumors go out your ear. Sweets and yapping like they know what the fuck happened. So holla at this chick, need to stop yapping. Make me wanna bust one of your ass, Captain. I'm on the lounge with you, cause you my nigga. A cute shoulder to lean on the cry river. Your mama don't like me, says so don't be a fool. That's okay, I ain't hate, she just old school. No, I don't play by the rules. Like to get busy, play around in the pool. We good, in fact, we much more than that. I think we perfect. I cut down on the bullshit because you worth it. And you deserve it. Holidays in Pacific Ocean. Mango food, baby girl, and body lotion. Peel your hands on you, put your hands on you. Contact on the planet, I got plans for you. The most definite hip hop specialist Back with this lyrically sophisticated weaponist Hip hop matrix on your favorite station Broadcast and journey for serving for me the papers Be the face so we just like us in the fucking nation under the group We are not like fucking delegate and masses is clear Moving this here and we gonna move Till we move everybody in here Since the assassination of serious sentiment The spiritual journey that we taking you on With some savannah to your experience Special arrangement, mass street, race track Man jump, dominate the punk Hip hop music and BV Stop for the world to see Everybody in the house go MVP Can you say it with me? MVP 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 Say SKI 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 Get some stresses in DJ FKI on the ones and twos. How about DJ? Mira que lo que, baby, ya me llega más 
Ayy, ayy, just make it for me see and me hate and me crave me the mess I'm on ease, ayy, what they flow, what they flow Mira, me so macho, le llego macho, le llego más Como di para el mar, dime que lo que es Tú me lo sigo para el decir Ayy, estamos aquí, dime que lo que es Dime que lo que es, estamos, estamos aquí Ayy, dime que lo que es, estamos aquí Ayy, mira mi papá, mira que lo que es Dude. Hey, you guys show me that move. How'd that move go? You're going like this? I love that, dude. I love that move. Show me the move real quick. I loved it, dude. Yeah. I loved it, dude. That was fucking awesome, man. Dude, that, how you guys, like, you got the DJ over here, and you're on the drums. And he's on the little uh, the little um the um chime thing, and yeah, and how you guys, yeah and how'd you guys like get it together? Because that's amazing. Where you got the DJ spinning and you're on the drums, like you know, like timing together. That's that's freaking amazing, dude. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Well, that's actually um yeah musicianship. I mean um that, that's that's what we do um. That's what we do. I don't know. Yeah, we, it's we happened just, by the soul. We feel it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, like, uh, an advantage is that I'm super loud on stage when I play drums. Like the drums were super little, but <laughs> you know, you killed it. You guys, you, you guys killed it, dude. It was fuck. That was awesome, dude. I was just like, what, dude? And that DJ come on. I was yeah. like, what? And then over, you're over here, ding, ding, ding. And then he got the moves, man. He's all like, ah, what's up, girls? Hey. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you know, that's like every show. There is, like, there it is. <laughs> there's some move happening. I mean, like also in that concert, like he was jumping off, uh, you know, uh, into the audience, dancing with the audience, coming oh, back yeah. on stage. Um, I mean, we have multiple concerts where girls were like, you know, coming on stage dancing. Oh, he's looking at him. Look at the smile over there. <laughs> he's like, no, baby, no, baby, no girls coming on the stage. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, no more, no more. Uh, yeah, um, but that's it. Like the, I, I mean, like the common denominator with like every artist we, we like working with um, is just that you know the groove is locked in, um, and yeah, that we speak the same vocabulary of just groove. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can build on top. And if the pen is tight, if you know the, the, the beat is tight, then everyone is able to to express themselves uh, and build different layers. Um, and like like I said, like all that we played in this jam, for example, was just completely freestyle. Um, so the music too, uh, yeah. You, you guys are very talented, man. Like I, I you know, I, hopefully one day I'll come out your way and see you guys actually perform live, or maybe one day you guys come to the states and do a tour yeah. and perform live. Because I mean, I mean, just watching that and hearing what you guys talk about your history together and everything, it it, it kind of collides together and puts everything all all in sense, you know. So you, you guys kill it, dude. Like I, I'm I'm hyped, dude, on you guys. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. So we, we should we should come over to California and, uh, and do it. Hey, if you come to California, he has to do the moves in the club, man. He has to get that going. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got a club concert coming up. Uh, it'll be the first in a in a, in a like in a in a dance club. Are we gonna play like, in the middle of the dance floor? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me let me know. I mean, I mean, I can probably you know talk to some like venues and stuff like that. I mean, we can probably get something going. I mean, cause I'll be rad. Cause I mean, you guys got a lot of talent and, you know, and like, you know, you guys can like, you know, need to spread the wings a little bit more out here to get you more out there. You know, I mean, you guys are already out there cause you already built such a good clientele or good audiences out there, you know? So that's definitely cool. And um, before we take off, is there, you know, a, for the viewers to check you out do you have like a website do you have like um social media or anything like that yeah um so it's i think it's easiest to, to follow us on instagram um so the name below right there nucleus project um right you can find us everywhere <laughs> that's, it. <laughs> that's it um so on instagram nucleus project we got a website uh which 
you, you got all the links on our on our Instagram. Um, and then uh, we got a website. You can subscribe to our newsletter, which is a great thing to do. Then you get all the concert announcement and every time we, you know, publish videos and, and new stuff. Actually, album coming this year, debut album, so you'll get everything. Um, and, and that's a fun project. Like, it's, it's been uh, years of, uh, you know, uh, years of work in this album. So um, we'd appreciate it if everyone, y'all just stay tuned, just, you know, um, yeah, follow us on Instagram, on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube, also New Breeze Project. And then uh, if you really want to become part of the New Breeze family, then you'll uh, subscribe to the newsletter. Hey, I'm, I'm part of the New Breeze family, man, because I, I, I love yeah. that stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when's this album, when do you expect this album coming out? Um, actually, I think we're not allowed to, to talk about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm interested because I, I want to start. You know, it's, it's probably going to be like uh, right now. It's going to be late spring. So okay. And and do you have a name for the album already, or or you can't talk about it? Let, let's just say uh, let's just say follow us on uh, on the social medias, and then you, you get the name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, hell yeah well you hear that viewers go follow these guys so if you want to know about their new album want to see where the tour at follow new bruise project on the social media get these guys because let me tell you after watching that video man i i'm hyped on these guys they're super hyped and and before we take off do you want do you have anything you want to say to the upcoming musicians artists hip-hop artists anything at all anything you got guys want to say to them uh yeah definitely like if there's artists out there or people that try uh, you know finding their own voice um go ahead and do it like um don't hesitate to to to, to share your energy um and to constantly uh yeah work work on what you really love um, and I think if, if you really love music and if you really love expressing yourself in, in that way, whatever it is, maybe producing or songwriting or being on stage rapping or freestyling, whatever it is, playing an instrument, then um, keep going. Um, just keep going. You're not too old. You're not too young. Uh, doesn't matter where you're from. Keep going. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the message. That's the message. Hell yeah, dude. Hey. Pound. <laughs> Virtual pound, buddy. <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming on, man. And and hey, you know, you guys are, you, you guys are very talented. Um, I'm look forward for your new album dropping soon, spring, hopefully sooner. Um, but yeah, definitely you guys killed it. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh stick around because coming up next, we got TJ Rogers. Yo. You guys killed it. Let's see. Thanks, buddy. All right, man. Take care. Take care. Take care. Peace. The seven elements of Shalom clothing stand for peace, success, tranquility, comfort, safety, integrity, and well-being. These elements inspire all people to create more positivity. Shalom is a greeting for hello and goodbye. The clothing is intended to be worn with inner peace expressed to everyone we meet. Founded in 5760, yeah, we measure differently. Shalom clothing is timeless apparel. With thought-provoking designs on quality-made products, together we spread a message of values. Creating connection and building community. What we wear represents what's inside. By wearing a piece, you are spreading peace. Shalom. What's up, TJ? What's going on? How you doing, dude? Good okay, yourself. Welcome Good home. Good to see you again. You too. Welcome home. Yeah, thank you. Well, you're up there and I'm down here. Yeah, 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 but still, I understand. So you grew up in Canada. What was it like skateboarding in Canada? It was dope, man. I loved growing up in Toronto. Uh, it was fun. I... You know, had a bit nice crew that we always kicked it with and skated every day. Even in the winter times, we'd go to this like underground path, which is was called it was, like an underground mall, mm -hmm. and like we would just skate all winter. You know, get chased by security all day. Super fun, and uh, yeah, it was fun. 
I was hyped. I ended up moving to California probably nine years ago now. And, you know, the rest is history. Yeah, because I remember Weiss was talking about you. Um, I was like, oh, dude, I got this dope kid that's riding for blind and TJ Rogers. We're about to drop this AM part, and I think it was the AM video. Yeah, this is not a test. Yes, and then I think I had one of our, I mean, Carl had one of our um, journalists come out there and did a full interview on you, so I still have the interview. Oh, uh, no way. On the side, I think it was you and somebody, I can't remember who else was. Either Seva or it could have been like Felipe Ortiz. I think it was Sueva. There's this guy, Kieran Riley, that was on the team back in the day. He's from like Oz. I think it was Sueva. Yeah. I think it was him, but yeah, that's, yeah, I remember that, dude. That was so uh, dope as fuck. Respect, thank you. And then like, you know, growing up in Canada, skating in Canada, and then like, did you feel it was like hard for you to get into the industry coming from Canada when you came here? Or was it like a little more difficult for you or what? It's always more challenging being out of country and not where like the hub is for like skateboarding. You know, mm -hmm. it was obviously, it was very like, it was originated out here in California where everyone skated and I was kind of like the Mecca. And like Canadians, they always kind of just like, didn't get like the, the respect and the coverage that like they deserved at that time. Cause it just wasn't really there yet, you mm -hmm. know, like, uh, so it was cool to like be able to just keep pushing and then end up getting a couple people that had my back and supported me the way that uh, I would hope. And you know, I just kept it moving. Just didn't just didn't stop uh, putting the gas on the pedal, you know? Yeah, I mean, and plus too, I mean, you, you started like so much fashion fade, that's fucking awesome. Right? <laughs> I mean, with the glasses, with the heart glasses, and I saw you yeah. at Tampa and with that on, you know? And then yeah. all of a sudden you see start people seeing that, like rocking that like hardcore like years yeah. later, you know? Yeah. And then I think now I see these bunch of kids now, like there's one kid, I, I don't know his name on it, I saw on Instagram, I was like, oh, is that TJ? Like totally full kid of you. Yeah. Like, that's rad, dude. It's, like, it's very humbling to see like, people dress and like kind of, I wouldn't say mimic, but kind of do like the same style and things that I do. It's, I don't really get mad. A lot of people are like, oh, that guy's biting my style like this. And it's like, if anything, it's a compliment to yeah. me where it's like, okay, I'm doing my thing and people see that I'm doing it and they want to probably be in a certain position to where they could be where I'm at almost to mm -hmm. where it's cool to be able to give that inspiration and outlet to somebody else to thrive and keep pushing for themselves. Yeah. And and then that's rad too, because I mean, think about it, because you never thought that your people were gonna be like copying you, you know? Because when I was growing Ever. up, when I was growing up, I, I looked up to Matt Hensley, so I mean, I had like yeah. the the, uh, the chain spell or the chain wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Those are coming back. I know they they're are coming, coming back. back. They are coming back. But that's what I grew up. You know, I mimicked that, yeah. and then now seeing like people mimicking you, I think that's fucking awesome, dude. It's cool, man. Because again, obviously for me growing up, like I my a couple of my biggest inspirations were like Grant Patterson and like Wade Desarmo, oh, Canadian legends, yeah. and they rocked really baggy clothes and. I did the same thing growing up and then there was a phase where like I finally started getting sponsored a little bit of money and you know they all kind of were like you wear way too big of clothes like we're gonna send you this and I'm like well if you're paying me a couple hundred bucks like sounds good I'll wear whatever you want me to wear what, what they said is like some tight jeans some mediums and like some skinny <laughs> jeans and I was just like I cannot dude, picture you wearing skinny jeans dude, dude. watch some of my old footage like 10 years ago <laughs> But I mean, it was cool because again, like I was able to like put my dreams into a reality and be able to move here with mm -hmm. the support that I got from most of my sponsors to where I was very happy with that. But, um, you know, now that I'm like in the position to kind of just do what I w want, mm -hmm. I've been able to actually excel further because, you know, I'm not like every other person out there dressing a certain way and trying to please their sponsors in a certain aspect. Like I just kind of do me. Yeah. And if people want to rock with me, they rock with me. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then, what do you listen to before you go? Like, what's you, you know before you go skating? Like, is there a certain kind of music that pumps you up, or I mean, classical? A little bit of everything. You know, like I got. I'm a huge vinyl collector, so I have like thousands of vinyls. No way. I, like, yeah, I got like a bunch of Motown, classical rock, like punk like not punk but like r&b like just a bunch of stuff and then obviously going to my phone i have pretty much every album of drake on it and yeah, you know, spotify right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like apple music apple music right. okay, okay same thing exactly <laughs> but um yeah so like i kind of like it just depends on my mood in the day and like what i'm up to i'll train i'll transition the music out to like fit my my mood you know yeah yeah definitely definitely that's right dude it's like Music's like, to me, music's like a very important thing to skateboarding. For sure. Because, I mean, think about it. I mean, when we skate, we skate to a rhythm. Yeah, 100%. You know, like music, with music as to the skateboarding, it's like a whole different gender. You know, you can be skating down and you're like, oh, dude, I'm going to, you know, put on some Wu-Tang. And you're like, 
protecting your neck right there, jumping down the stairs, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no pun intended, but yeah, exactly. yeah I got you. <laughs> yeah. But that's rad, dude. And, like, getting all these, you know, from blind to Red Bull, yeah. like, was it hard to get get those sponsors coming from Canada to the United States, or did you know people that hook you up and stuff? Yeah, luckily, like, I had some people in my corner at a young age to where, you know, I kind of just try to be the squeaky wheel that needs the grease, mm -hmm. as they always say back in the day where um, I had good connections and I just kept consistently sending footage to like these companies and being like, hey, like, just want to give you an update. Here's my quarterly like review of like, you know, what I've been up to, going to this thing in the next couple months. Just, you know, let me know if you guys need anything in the meantime. Thank you for your support, et cetera. And like, I kind of kept doing that. And then eventually, you know, like I've been, for most of my sponsors, except for probably a new couple newer ones, like I've been riding for the company for almost 15 years. What's the longest one? 15 years. I mean, what company? I mean, sorry. I mean, I've been rocking with Red Bull since 2008. I've been with Blind since like 08. I've been with Diamond, Bones Wheels. Um, There's a lot of them. You know? Dude, have respect because uh, you don't see that that much in the, in the industry. Yeah, like, you don't see many skaters or pro skaters sticking to the same company for 18, 15 Well, it's years. loyalty, you know. Yeah. It's like I said, I came from a rough upbringing, you know, within like foster care and group homes and stuff when I was a kid. And whenever like someone gave me a chance to do what I wanted to do, like I appreciated that. And it'll always hold like a special place in my heart to where I just continue to like support them mm -hmm. because it's like treat others how you want to be treated, you know. Yeah. And those companies gave me a chance. And maybe if I didn't get that chance, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So I'm very appreciative and grateful for them doing what they did. Yeah, yeah. And did you have a skate shop back home that supported you too? Or? Yeah, yeah. I had a couple like shops that I was riding for in and out like back in the day when I was a kid. There's a Scott shop called like Switch Skate and Snow. They're mm -hmm. still around. They're like really good on social media, et cetera. And then like there's this other shop called Scotty's that's in my hometown wrote for them for a little bit and they hooked me up they helped me out with like my phone bill for a few years when I needed it and then yeah those are like the two that were kind of like always there for me we had like an indoor skate park too before I was on both of those shops and like that's when I started to really get good but it wasn't like it was short-lived yeah so yeah that's right I mean that's that's right that you got that that much support from like from all those companies and, and shops to get you where you're at now. Yeah, no, for sure, yeah. I mean, I've had good people in my corner ever since I was a cat, young kid, so it's, a, it's very, I'm very grateful for that and I'm just stoked to be where I'm at, you know? Is there, is, you know, is there anything that you would wanna change or would, there, or would you keep everything as is? I keep everything as is, you know? Obviously, there's certain things that you can change, but you can't dwell on like something you can't control. And I just played the cards at my best ability at the time, and I just did what I had to do to survive, you know? Like, coming from the upbringing that I had, I was like a survivor and a warrior, at a sense, to where like I had to just like do what made sense to me at that time. Like, if I was ignorant and, you know, wanted it a specific way, like, maybe I wouldn't be where I'm at. So yeah. I just made sure that I, you know, kept my head down, kept skating, doing what I wanted to do. And as long as I did that, that's what made me happy. And I can't complain, you know? And, and you also, too, was rad about you, too, is, like, you do a lot for the skate community, too. So, I mean, yeah. you do, like, teaching kids and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I used to teach kids how to skate a lot when I was a kid growing up in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, there's like these other indoor skate parks that uh, and like skate camps in the summertime that always hit me up. I'm like, hey, can you come for the Friday session? Um, you know, we'll pay you like 150, 200 bucks to come out for the day, teach the kids how to skate, and like we'll have a pizza party and we'll oh, pay for your like yeah, bus dude. there and back. And I was like, yeah, cool, I'm down. So I've always been able to like try to help the communities in that sense with teaching. And then for the last 10 years, I've been doing my own event like annually for a friend that passed away. Uh, I guess 11 years now, 2012 is when he passed. Mm -hmm. So I was doing an annual event every year in my hometown for him. And then just last year, well, I missed the last two years because of COVID, et cetera. Yeah. But I did an event in North Hollywood Skate Park last summer just to, you know, give some support to the local community that I've been staying with, you know, because I've been going there pretty much like every day to skate. Yeah. So it's been fun, you know. And I just want to make sure that those kids have like a, a fighting chance at what like they want to do as well you know because it's hard to really like kind of get your foot in the door and skateboarding at certain times because there's literally just so many people well, so there is the more that you're able to try and help people out like the better i feel you know because that really amps them up 
and it only wants them to do better as well. Did you feel like when the, when this whole pandemic thing happened and you got everybody got froze for like two years or whatever, where you're like, fuck, what am I, like, what am I gonna do about skateboarding? How am I gonna skate? Were you just out there plugging stuff? That was or a relief, honestly, because <laughs> I was doing the. I was like on the whole Olympic skirt circuit for like Canada. Oh, that's right. I remember, and yeah. uh, long story short, once COVID hit, I was kind of relieved. I was stoked because you know everyone's just inside their house, not doing anything because they're scared to leave the house. And for me, I just not to say that I was a rebel of any sense, but I'm a skateboarder. You yeah. know, I like to go out and like hit the streets, and there was no security because of the fact that everyone had to be at home. So I was able to really capitalize and execute as much as I wanted to on all these different spots that normally you wouldn't be able to skate. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of like made the most of every situation since I was a kid and in COVID. And I feel like COVID was like a huge blessing to me personally because I was able to really excel and like move forward in the career on like how I wanted to be perceived. So mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you COVID for it. Yeah, <laughs> not really, but yeah, thanks. And, and you got a shoe line or, or shoe color. Tell us about it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when kind of COVID, like, I just started getting S shoes in, like, 2019, Dude, uh, right at the beginning. How's that feel, Ryan, for Tom Penny? With, with Tom uh, with Penny. With Tom Penny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You no, know, he's a legend. I've kicked it with him a few times, too, in the past, and he's just the ultimate GOAT. So, it's really, like, cool to, like, be on the same team as somebody as legendary yeah. yes. as him to where I can, like, you know, go on trips and I can see him, like, skate around and stuff. So, it's cool. But, yeah, like, how the whole thing came up with S, like... I wasn't riding for any shoe company in 2018. I was buying shoes, and then I hit up Kelly, and I was like, yo, man, like, could we try and work something out? Like, I don't really, he's like, we can't do nothing with you, you know? Like, you're, you'll never get on type thing, but, like, we'll hook you up with shoes because we want to support you. And I was mm -hmm. like, cool, like, thank you. That's all I need, man. Yeah. Like, I'll figure it out in the future. And then, you know, did that for all of 2019, and then COVID hit, and then I just, like, kept, like I said, I was skating every day, like, creating content for, all my sponsors and I had all this extra footage so as the the younger mentality of me being like you know every quarter I always send my sponsors stuff I would send s like hey like I got all this stuff in your shoes like thanks again for the support just want to show you what I'm up to and then that was like that ended up turning out to where they sent me some uh, shoes once that never came out yet it was like for the manic Matty capsule mm -hmm. and I filmed like for five days in that in that shoe and I filmed like a little mini part in it and it was just VX because I wanted to like pay homage to it, you know? Yeah. And did that and I sent it to him. He's like, dude, like, that's so rad. Like, we want to use it. I was like, help yourself, man. Like, thank you. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Like, so then we worked on that and then consistently I just kept doing the same thing, dropped another part for blind, all these other things. And then, you know, I just continuously tried to like just keep putting out content for them and whenever they wanted it. And then, yeah, they ended up like signing me in 21 and then yeah we started working on a colorway at that time because you know how it works in the industry it takes about a year for everything to unfold mm -hmm. so did that and then my shoe my first colorway it actually just dropped in like november of 22 oh, that and uh time. that's it that's the excel plus excel og plus and it just has a red bottom all new buck leather which looks like suede but it like just skates like suede but it's like really comfortable i love them i swear i buy them they're good it's the first day you obviously got to get used to it and like you know because it's a brand new shoe and they're bulky but you know they match my aesthetic of like how big my pants are so <laughs> you, you, really i can see how big the tongue is you can tuck the the thing underneath that right <laughs> yeah yeah and you could also get this other thing where you like get the extra tongue so it gets even puffier <laughs> yeah, you know we used to do that back in the day we cut the old tongue off the old shoe yeah and, and put it underneath that one so puff it up a little bit and get yeah our feet in there, dude. I, there's i guess there's a company that actually does that now. are you serious yeah i don't know what it's called but like there's an actual company out there on instagram that like Gives you the like, extra puff in your shoe if you want to look extra G. <laughs> like, what the hell is this, you know? Dude, they're fucking capping on skateboarding. Yeah. Right? And I'm going I'm to go back a little bit because you said something yeah. that, that caught my um, caught my ear. Is you, you say you give your sponsors quarterly tapes. Yeah, well, depending you... on the sponsor. Not every sponsor, okay. but for, for the ones that are, like, in the core media of, like, what I'm doing. And they want you know specific support and certain things that I can know that like they want like I always try and keep that and especially like I did it more so like when I was younger coming up because mm -hmm. you know as an amateur and like a flow kid just getting stuff like you want to make sure to show your sponsors and your companies that like you're very proactive and you're like putting your best foot forward each and every day mm -hmm. and 
if you're not doing that, then you kind of get left in like the back burner where like they're just thinking about you whenever you message them for boards. Yeah. Where it's like if you're just hitting them up on like some other ones and be like, yo, what's up, man? Yo, just wanted to say hi. Hey, check out my footage that I just got in the last couple of weeks. Again, yo, thank you for the support. It really goes a long way to them because they're obviously thinking about you a little more and they're showing, you're, you're showing initiative to where you're able to like be on their mind more to being like, hey, man, like he's really doing something here. Like, we got to keep an eye on him a little more, mm -hmm. you know? So that's kind of what I always tried to do. And I didn't learn that from anyone. It was just more of like the businessman in me that like I wanted to try and do that to show them that like I appreciate what they did for me and like the boards that I would get or the sh whatever, like it's going to good use. Yeah. I'm not just selling it, yeah. you know? So it was cool. Like, no, it sucked. And I think that's awesome. I mean, that, that you do that because I mean, I don't know if kids, skaters now do that a lot because, but when I was growing up, you know, that's what we had to do. You know, we give them the, what you said, you, you know, you got sponsors, flow sponsor, you got to send them videos. You got to, yeah. you know, give them videos, let them show you skating. And I think that's right that you do that, man. Yeah. You got to do it, you know, it just, it really helps you in the long run to show that like, you're uh, not only supporting the brand, but like you're putting in 110% to where the sponsor's like, uh, yo, like this guy's taking it serious. Mm -hmm. and he's not just taking half the boards and selling them and then just like, kind of just f like floating around, you yeah. know, doing what he's doing, you know, so. It was cool. Like I was, uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to be in a position to where I could do that. So, oh yeah. All right. Have, have you tried a rat jerky yet? No. Carl was telling me about it before we jumped yeah. on this, though. Hey, try a piece. Got you got a piece. Yeah. I got a piece. Was was to let the people know what so, it tastes like. Yeah. So what is this exactly? This is Something. rat jerky teriyaki. Okay. Right here. Boom. It's like a teriyaki. Oh, my bad. Island yaki. So it's a uh, okay. soy sauce, salt. Sugar, pineapple juice, vegetable, vinegar, onion, sesame seed, garlic, ginger, and dry ginger. Mm. A lot of ingredients, but it tastes tasty. I know, I know right? <laughs> mm. Oh, it's good. good I pizza. like it. Good stuff, Carl. Good stuff, Carl. Respect. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. Right here. My bad. <laughs> Mahalo. <laughs> Let it drop down on my lap. I'm gonna put it here because I'll keep eating it. I'm not gonna be able to talk. <laughs> I know. I got it chewy in my mouth right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, no, it's delicious. No, it definitely is. Um, do you feel like, you know, this is something I always wonder in my mind about about the industry and stuff like that. Do you feel that like the industry finally notices who you are? Like finally, like. Dude, this is T.J. Rogers. He's he's killing it. He's doing an amazing job. You know you know what I mean? Like coming in from 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 Canada to here, and I know we already talked about a little bit about it, but I just want to know like, do you feel like the industry is finally noticing who you are? Yeah, I mean, I feel like they you know they started taking some notice of like who I am and what I do, etc. But not everyone knows who I am, which is completely fine with me. You mm -hmm. know, like I'm not willing mean, to just you know be a superstar like I just do it because I'm passionate about it and it saved me through a lot of bullshit in my life that like helped me get to where I'm at you know like like I said I've been through a lot in my life to where if I didn't have skateboarding to be my outlet and like get me away from all the other bad negative stuff that I was around like I wouldn't be where I'm at I just focused all my energy and just tried to like be the best version of myself throughout all that and skateboarding was able to be that for me mm -hmm. that like I'm thankful for it and Going back to like, if people know who I am, like I respect and I appreciate the support throughout all the years. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna continue to just keep doing what I'm doing. Fuck you yeah, know? Yeah. Fuck yeah. There's nothing else to it at the end of the day. Like you just gotta be happy doing what you're doing. And as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Cause you can't please everybody. Yeah. But as long as you're mentally and physically happy with yourself that's all that matters oh yeah you know? dude, that, right i like that that's so true and two more questions um so i got more than that if you want <laughs> <laughs> couple more questions um what do you have coming up for 23 anything big anything exciting for the viewers and people to know what's what coming up for you yeah i mean um for 23 uh got a couple things going on i'm going to be doing a documentary on my life uh, with Red Bull, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously I was going through some things, some challenging times last year, like I had cancer and whatnot. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be speaking on all of that throughout my documentary with them. And then I have another colorway for S dropping at the fall 23. Mm -hmm. And then 
Obviously, I'll continue to keep dropping parts. And Are we going to see like 10 video parts of this 23-3? I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Him. I'd like to at least put at least two or three out there Because you did four last year. I did four last year. So we got to so do six this year. I don't know about that. That's, <laughs> that's OD, you know. But in all reality, like since COVID happened, now we were talking about how it was like really good for me. That kind of like was... Because obviously, like a lot of my focus was on contests for 2019 and 2018, as well as like street skating. Mm-hmm. And I could only put out like one, maybe two parts a year. But then when COVID hit, like I was like since COVID hit, like in 2020, I've dropped at least three parts a year. Mm-hmm. Like 2020, it was three parts. 2021, 20, three parts. 22 is like four. So 2023, five. We're gonna see. We'll see. <laughs> oh, I'm pushing that. I got, right? I got a lot of stuff that I gotta do. Just you know. I just, yeah, we'll see what happens. And are you, so are you going to escape more contests or are you going to go a little bit more back to street filming for street? Well, I haven't really done too many events. Like the last events that I was doing was like in 21 mm-hmm. where I was at Dew Tour. I did pretty good then. Yeah. I got qualified third and then, yeah, rained out and then I had to skate at like 10 at night. Damn. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to skate. I'm good. <laughs> Didn't do as well as I'd hoped, and then flew out to Paris, did all right at this like Red Bull event, like right at the Eiffel Tower. Oh, I saw that. Uh, yeah, that was sick. Then um, did Tampa Pro, seen you there. Yeah, that's when we were I'll, having I'll, a good. I'll see you again this we're year. We're having good memories. Oh yeah, <laughs> and then uh, we'll make more good memories this year. <laughs> of course, <laughs> so it's their thirtieth anniversary yeah. for the park. Oh wow, really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Not, not for not for Tampa Pro, it's twenty nine, but for the park, it's thirtieth. Yeah, no way. You know it's gonna be a big party. Yeah, yeah, no, 30th for the contest, yeah, because they, year, they started year. in 92. Yeah, oh well, no, 93. No, 92, I have oh, one of their that, hats. Was it 92? No, it could be 93, actually. Mm-hmm. I don't fucking we'll, know. We'll, we'll, we'll see it. We'll see you next month. We'll see you next month. <laughs> I'll see you next month. You know? <laughs> but um, I just remember getting one of their hats back in the day, because I, like, really loved New Era caps. I'd collect them. I remember getting one that was, like, teal and, like, pink. Are, like, you, are you a big collector? I used to be, yeah. I used to be heavy into like collecting new era hats back in the day. Before I got on Red Bull, I'd rock like all those types of hats. But then now you do jerseys, right? I do jerseys. Yeah, thank you again for the Steelers. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna wear it today, but uh, it was a little dirty, so I had to wash it. And I didn't want to <laughs> bring it out without it, you know. But um, yeah, so yeah, we'll see what else happens this year. I got a few other things in the works. Don't want to. You know, jump the gun on a lot of it, but you know, stay tuned. We'll see what happens. All right, and and what do you have for the upcoming skaters, upcoming pros? These new pros are getting on these board brands. What do you have want to say to these people, or not these people, but these skaters? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and as I always say to myself, you always want to put your best foot forward each and every day and try to be the best version of yourself because you only get one life and one opportunity to try and like really grow into that and you know i've been skating for 23 years now so i've kind of been around the block but yeah i know you that long Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's uh ultimately you just gotta you know just try and do your best every day because that's all you get and the more they're able to do that and stay consistent to what you want to do you'll end up being able to reap those rewards but you know, being distracted by certain things, it's not really the best solution to where you want to be. Mm-hmm. But you just got to be, just acknowledge those things and be aware of like your surroundings and, you know, people enabling you to doing certain things and just make sure to just stay focused, you know? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Well, TJ? Yeah. I guess we, we got everybody from TA, TSM crew has something for you. Oh, shit. What do you guys got? Oh, let me, I, was, let me, I thought let me, it was just a beef drink. Uh, let, let, let me dig down here. Let me dig down here in the dungeon real quick. Oh, you know? yeah, okay. I got to do some. Well, I'm zipping and all this stuff. Just bear with me here, TJ. What do you got for me? We got something for you, dude. Oh, shit. No, you shouldn't have. No, we got you something, man. You know, TJ, it. you have done so much for skateboarding. You know, um, you know, 2022, you know, you conquered the most craziest, deadliest disease, cancer. Yeah. You know, and, you know, you dropped four video parts. You did, you know, shoe line. You've done so much for skateboarding. So, we, you shit. are TSM <laughs> Skater of the Year 2022, brother. Yeah. 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 No, that's 
much respect. Thank you. Yeah. You didn't need to do that. That's awesome, though. <laughs> you're, you're our skater of the year, brother. That's fucking hilarious. How did you make this? Oh, right there. Yo, how did you make this? <laughs> I, I go oh, chill with a shorty. Like, I go chill with a shorty, and I just like I'm wearing this when she comes over. I'm just like, yeah, what's up, baby? Yo, that shit's fucking hilarious. It's heavy too, bro. That's fucking crazy. Hey, that's from, that's from everybody from TSN crew, from the whole skate world. Everybody knows that you're no. the skater, true skater of the year. Bro. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. And we Thank know you. you're 100. percent Appreciate you know, it, bro. Definitely. That's fine. <laughs> I just, I'm gonna blow away, man. Well, guys, well, it is a wrap for TSM Live Show, Season 6, Episode 1. I'm your host, Tommy Zam. I want to say thank you for Local H2O for allowing us to film this episode. Thank you for all our sponsors for making this season happen. Thank you for all our guests for coming on to Skateboard Mag Live Show. Tune in. Next month for season six, episode two, because that shit is going to be epic. But I'm going to leave you with New Breeze Projects. You! Make some noise on Monday! Make some noise on Monday! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go! Gang ho no vi! Ha! Gang ho po po! Ha! Gang ho da da! Alright. Hey, I'm gonna do it. 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 Hey, I'm gon
Do we have a party or what? Put your hands up. 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 Go. Go. Jump. 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 Jump.